right, Home Center family, welcome back to the journey. Thank you for being part of the journey, and don't forget to share the journey. Also, welcome to this edition of the Sunday Monday Vlog. Now, for those of my YouTube uh, family, Facebook family, etc., etc., that watch this video uh, religiously all the time, this episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, instead of going over everything, I'm going to go over questions and comments I've been getting. I've been writing down a list, so it's going to be like a Q&A session right now. And then I'll have the regular uh, footage video uh, going on after uh, this segment. But with so many new people uh, joining in, I think I have a, another 100 or something. Or not 100, 50 some subscribers on YouTube all of a sudden. And now I have several hundred more on Facebook and Instagram's picking up, Twitter's picking up. So because I'm growing, I'm getting more questions and comments and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over uh, as much as I can. So I filled a whole uh, list here of what everybody wanted to know uh, or questions, comments, uh, things like that. So I'm going to start going over all those and we'll go from there. So first off, I'm getting a lot of questions. Who am I? So I'm Johnny Jules. I'm the one that runs today's Homestead Ranch and Petting Zoo. Uh, it's just who I am. Uh, when did I start this? I started this four years ago. I started in 2016. I started the YouTube channel up. Uh, started as a homestead cha channel, living off grid, um, now going into a petting zoo, and of course I'm going to get back to the whole homesteading in the next couple years because I'm going to be building a farm and doing a lot of other stuff, which I'll cover that in another question. Uh, why did I open to the public? I opened to the public because last year, uh, after I got camels and Azores and uh, different uh, Scottish Highlander Zebu cattle and all that type of stuff. I started having people visit because they saw things on my Facebook with me walking a uh, camel down the road on a leash and the different adventures and uh, the exotic journey that I'm on. So I decided to open to the public because after 400 people last year just showing up random times, random days, and then I got Rex the Kangaroo in January and started getting 40 to 50 people a week coming up. I just decided that I should uh, go ahead and turn it into a business because if I had that many people coming up and people were willing to pay, uh, then that would help cover the feed costs of the animals because it's running me roughly 42000 a year in animal feed alone. I spent roughly 450000 last year. 75,000 on the perimeter fence, the shipping containers, over 50,000 buying animals, um, so on and so forth. But the biggest cost uh, year over year is going to be the feed. And like I said, I'm spending roughly 42,000 a year. Right now I'm spending three grand a month in feed. I go through almost four pallets of feed right now during the warm weather. And then I go through five to six pallets during the winter time at 450 475 bucks a pallet and then you also got to include hay now because we had no rain this year it's costing me more money this summer and spring and early fall because i put eight thousand dollars of seed out and no rain to make nothing germinate so i just got a semi load of hay which you see in footage coming up after this and that's why I decided to open public. If I could help cover some of the feed bill, it would take off a big burden of coming up with that much money each year just to feed the animals, let alone try to expand the ranch, farm, and everything else I want to do here. Uh, I've had several of these comments now. They want to know if I am copying Joe Exotic. No, I am not copying Joe Exotic. A lot, I've seen a lot of comments. Everybody's like, oh, all these places are going to start popping up. No, I don't think a lot of these places are going to pop up because A, it's a lot of money. B, you can't go nowhere. You're committed to the farm. You can't go on vacation. Can't go uh, places over the weekend and things like that. You can't go hanging out that, at the bars because you got to be here for the animals. So a lot of people don't want to live that lifestyle for one. For two, it's very expensive. 
So a lot of people, especially with the economy now, can't afford it. Um, and three, I've been doing this, like I said, for four years. So it's not like I just saw the Tiger King in March and just started everything in April. I've done this for four years now. Uh, I just decided to open to the public because of all the people coming up here. So yes, Joe, the Tiger King, Joe Exotic, that uh, uh, TV series came out perfect timing. That came out. Now I opened and now everybody wants to come up. That helps. And then of course got uh, news coverage, which I'll go over that. And uh, so let's see. When am I open my days and my hours? I am open every day 11 to 7 except Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays I am closed. Um, Due to the fact that I have to get stuff done here around the ranch, I do work uh, during the days that I am open, as everybody has seen that has come up here, because it's a, it's a work in process, progress. Uh, I'm going to continue working, trying to get things built, trying to get things accomplished, and uh, my goal is to have everything done by 40. I just turned 33 in February, so I have just under seven years to get everything built, and then we're hopefully have everything done by the time I'm 40. So for those of you that have visited, those of you that have come back, uh, you see the progress every day, every week, whenever you visit, and it will just grow and grow and grow into a bigger and bigger thing as time goes on. And as financially, I can afford to do what I can do. Uh, do I have a website? Yes, I do. It is www.homesteader.com. H O M E S T E A D E R dot today. T O D A Y. That's it. Homesteader dot today. Uh, that has the hours. It has the pricing. Uh, has everything. I have people asking for prices. I have so many different prices. And I'm getting so many messages now and emails. I can't take the time to. Uh, tailor each email to what that person needs. So. I had a uh, two vehicles show up today with a bunch of people. They drove out here. They did not go on the website and look at the prices and all that. And I apologize that they drove all the way up here because they didn't have cash. They didn't have a card. They had no way of paying. Uh, but for anybody looking to come up, Go on the website, check the website out, get all the prices. I do a cash discount. It's a severe, severe uh, discount if you pay in cash because paying credit card, they hold it for several days. They take a percentage of each transaction and they take a set fee per transaction. So it's just a headache altogether. If I've got to go buy an animal or go buy a pallet of feed, I, I can't have the money tied up, so that's why the prices are different. Plus, with the cash discount, most locals uh, here in the community, they're going to go on the website. They're going to know it's cash. And then the tourists who are used to paying uh, the big prices at the Royal Gorge and everywhere else, uh, they normally don't have cash. If they do have cash, they get the benefit as well. If not, then the bigger... A uh, bigger amount of admission is coming from tourists out of the state, out of the community versus the locals and the community that I want to help out by being uh, cheaper than everything else around here. Because everything around here, we have a dinosaur exhibit, we have the gorge, we have Pikes Peak. Everybody wants like $30 a person. Uh, it's just crazy. So that's why my prices are the way they are. And that's the website for you guys. Uh, why don't I have a house? I'm getting a lot of people asking me. Give me one second. I have a lot of people asking me when they come up. Are you staying in that camper trailer? Why don't you have a house? Do you live off the ranch and just drive here every day? Well, the reason I don't have a house is because I hired a builder last year. And the builder walked off with $30,000. So... I was supposed to have a house last year, or at least a shell of a house. I was going to finish the inside. Uh, so the builder walked off with 30000 Turned out it's a scam artist family. And 
the sheriff has investigated. They've done this to a lot of people. It's an investigation still ongoing, so I can't go into details. But I lost 30 grand last year. Don't have a house. And uh, it's just been a mess. So I had to file my building permit with the county June 15th of 2020 this year. They gave me that leniency to stay in the camper until... Or not have to file a building permit and stay in the camper until June 15th. And the problem I'm having is I still can't find somebody to do the foundation. So I do have plans to stop at the county and see if there's any way they can get me somebody. Because nobody's returning phone calls. Nobody wants to come to Cotopaxi. I can't even get estimates. That's the worst part about Colorado. Uh, back east, you want to estimate. You can get 5 to 10 companies come right out. Give you estimates right away. Out here in Colorado... Seems like nobody ever wants to work. I don't know uh, what it is with Colorado, but that's on everything. My well took forever to finally get somebody out here to do the well. Um, it's just been a mess overall. So I'm going to try to get a house uh, built this year, possibly a shell of a house, so I can move into that instead of the camper trailer. Uh, but it all depends. I can't do a foundation. Uh, foundation is the most important part of a house. And I want it done right. So I don't even want to take the risk of messing it up. Anything after the foundation. Uh, duct tape and uh, zip ties and all that type of stuff will probably fix any mistakes I make. So won't be the prettiest. But the animals are more important right now. That's why I had the hay delivery uh, yesterday or day before. And I'm focusing on getting everything done with the petting zoo and all that and then I'll worry about the house as soon as there's a foundation uh, if there's no foundation I can't do nothing so that's where I stand on the house and then that leads to the next question which is why not build my house first and worry about doing the animals and fencing and everything else I'm working on now later well in my mind the animals are more important so that's why the fencing is going up Plus, uh, some of the fencing was required with insurance. Uh, the sinks, uh, the porta potty, all those different things were required in order to have the insurance that I have. So I had to meet certain mandates, which on Thursday, uh, yeah, Thursday, I had my insurance inspection. So they came out, they got photos of the place, uh, asked a bunch of questions, checked the animals, all that type of stuff. So past the insurance stuff and the fencing. I still have a couple more things I need to do for the insurance company. Uh, a little bit more fencing to meet my requirements, but they see that I'm only one person. I'm doing it myself and I've done 95% of what they've needed. It's just my time. I can only do so much in a day and they understand that. So I'll finish what I can. And I'm sure I'll have another insurance inspection shortly to make sure everything got accomplished. And then we'll go from there. Uh, next question is, what are my plans for animals, ranch, and future goals? So, my plans right now, I wanted to get bamboo and leaf trees in this year. But because it was so dry and so windy and horrible weather, bamboo needed to go in the first week of June. I did not meet that requirement because we had snow into June. June 9th we had, I think it was either 2.5 or 4.5 inches of snow. So this year has just been a worse. 2020 has not been a good year to try to meet goals and plan things because everything's been tossed around 2020 so my goal for 2021 if the rest of 2020 goes well and business picks up and does well for the rest of this year and going into next year then my goal is i want another kangaroo for rex because as everybody knows i don't like having just one camel or one horse or one donkey i like to have a minimum of two so they have the same species 
uh, to talk to, to associate with, to play with, to live with. So another kangaroo is on the books. I'm still looking all the time uh, for a kangaroo to come up. That's not $7,500 because I don't have that money right now with the economy being down, cryptocurrency being down, my money being down. Um, I've got to save the money for the house and money to feed the animals. So uh, baby or another kangaroo will be on the way if everything goes as planned. And next year I also plan to get a pair of zebras and a pair of ostriches as long as everything goes well. Uh, other goals for 2021 will be bamboo, leaf trees, and other stuff, which at the end of the year I'll do... For those of you that don't know, I do an end of the year review. I go over this year or the previous year. And then the first week of January, I do a new year, new goals. And I will have a video on everything planned out for all the goals and everything 2021. And go that way. So I'm not going to spend all the time going through all my goals because I'll do that in January. So everybody can see uh, what's coming up for the year and uh, what new animals are planned if I hit certain quotas and things like that. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, KOAA Channel 5 News reached out to me. They found me on uh, Facebook. It came out several weeks ago. I'm not sure if I talked about it in the other video. I know I said I was gonna be on the news. So I they put me on the news, which was crazy. I got almost three and a half minutes of prime time. So our story aired Monday, July 6, 2020 at 10 p.m. So we were on the 10 o'clock news for almost three and a half minutes. So it went out to a lot of a lot of people. And I can see the uh, change already because it aired Monday, Wednesday. We broke our record for Memorial Day. That was 26 people. And we had 27 people. So we only broke it by one, but we broke the record. And then Saturday, we had 25 people. And then today, I still have to do the papers. Uh, but I think we had 10 people today. We had some rain clouds, so uh, that probably kept some people away. Uh, let's see. Emu egg update. Everybody's been asking about the emu eggs. So none of the emu eggs hatched as I thought because I thought I cooked them because they were at a higher temperature, higher humidity with the chicken eggs, which I knew, uh, but I was seeing if it would work. It didn't work, which I'll show you right over here. I bought a Dremel. I'm going to drill them out and I'm going to sell the eggshells. So there's all the emu eggs sitting there. I just have so much stuff. Drilling the eggs is not my top priority. So they're going to smell. They're going to smell really, really ripe by the time I get to it. And then down here in the incubator, we have this entire tray that goes all the way back. It's a big cabinet incubator. So I think I have 10 dozen chicken eggs in there now. I'll have baby chicks the end of July. They should start hatching along with all the other babies that are coming due. Uh, baby updates. <laughs> Uh, got the camel, Cleopatra, she's due. We have the donkeys that are due. We have the baby chicks going to be hatching. Uh, Minnie Mouse, Anatolian Shepherd, she's due the end of July. And who knows how many other babies I could have. Uh, for those of you that are wanting to know that are local, I will be taking pictures of the babies as I have new babies. They'll be on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, etc., etc. So if you guys follow those three uh, social media accounts, you'll be able to see when I have new babies. Uh, that way you guys can bring the kids back up or come up and check out the babies and go from there. And the last thing, why don't I act slash why don't I use a script? Um, I've had several people ask why I'm not editing my videos. I stutter a couple times or I say the wrong word or I get hung up on something and try to think of what I'm trying to come up with. It's not a perfectly flowing, perfectly entertaining, 
perfectly situated video. The reason I don't do any of that is one, there's millions of YouTube channels and everybody likes to be an actor. Uh, people like to show you the rosy side of things, the rainbows, the unicorns, the birthday cakes, the whole nine yards. They want everything to look happy. They want everything to look perfect. Uh, same thing in marriages. Uh, people make their marriage look like they're happy when they're out in public. When they're home, they're miserable. Same thing with relationships. So on and so forth. Everybody acts throughout life. And I've had a lot of compliments on my channel over the years of me being real. Me not smiling all the time. Although I do love to smile all the time. Uh, but I'm not acting all the time. I don't make everything seem happy all the time. Sometimes I have bad neighbors and I make a video about bad neighbors, which I've seen comments on that. Oh, he talks bad about his neighbors. Well, it is what it is. And that's all I can say. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and make everything look happy. I'm not going to script out stuff and make the exciting uh, pieces to make everybody watch the video all the way through. I know 90% of people do not watch my video all the way through. They watch 5 minutes or 2 minutes or 30 seconds. I know it, it may not be a catchy video like I used to do with the small 2 minute clips of the animals and things like that. Which like I said as soon as I hit 5,000 subscribers I'll start doing 2 videos a week. I'll do a Sunday, Monday vlog and do a small video of the animals or uh, another project or something like that. But I'm not going to sit here and script everything out and make people believe things are better than they seem or cause a bunch of drama that isn't real. I already have enough drama as it is with all my Carol Baskin neighbors. Uh, so I don't need any more drama than I already have. So I do have a drama element uh, to keep some people entertained. And they want to see when the cops are here next, when animal control is here next, so on and so forth. So I'm just living my life, doing my thing. And for those of you that are new, once again, if you watch this far, I started this to look back when I get older to see my life endeavors on video. Uh, my grandfather had dementia. So if it gets passed down to me. Or I get some type of thing like that. Maybe these videos will click things. Uh, later on down the road. And it just became a public thing. And then this has just grown. And this journey has just evolved. Where I got news coverage. We were in the 4th July Parade in Canyon City. And it's just a big journey going on and on. So I'm going to stop rambling. Enjoy the rest of the clips on what I got accomplished this week. And I'll see you guys on the next Sunday, Monday vlog. Have a great week. Alright, so this is the last of the little bit of fence here that I got to get picked up. And then, of course, I had all that done all the way to the edge of the pond. And then I'll work on that fence another time. Uh... But here's all the different tractor implements, plus I've got implements up top, which I'm going to be moving these up over there inside the fence area. And then this is the big junk area here in the farm area. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get all the wood first, all the pallets. I figured since we can't do uh, open fires to burn, and I don't want to wait till winter, uh, the trench on the other side of the pig pen that I'm filling in, that I started filling in, I'm just going to go ahead and bury the wood because it's on, it's going to be on the edge of my property uh, and it's going to help as it breaks down. It's going to give some type of nutrients to the ground even though some of it is um, pressure treated and things like that. But worms and all that, they've gotten in. Can I help you, Ginners? Can I help you? You just want to be on camera? Silly Gans. Silly Gans. Silly Gans. 
But anyhow, so I'm gonna bury the wood. Worms have gotten into pressure treated wood that has sat out here for a while. And same with the railroad ties that I had buried already. When I would flip them over, there'd be a whole bunch of worms crawling in and out of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that as a filler for the um, ditch over there. And then what I'm gonna do now that I thought about that is Every pallet of feed I get comes on a pallet, so that will give me pallets. And on the other side of the mountains, the dry creek bed, or the dry washout bed area, I'm going to start at the, my property line and work my way back. And then when I rent the dozer, I want to flatten all that land to make cornfields, pumpkin patches, and all that type of stuff. So then that way I can fill all that in and that wood will absorb water and help hold water uh, deeper in the ground and then uh, give me more of a water absorbent type thing here on the land so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get working and I'll talk to you guys later say bye Gans say bye Gans say bye 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 all right, Monday evening, first day of working. Got all the implements moved, sat the fence there, and I started chiseling away at the pile. So the white horse trailer's filled with garbage, and then after I get that empty out, then I'll come through, grab all the scrap metal, fill the horse trailer out with scrap metal, and then start hauling the rest of the stuff to the other side of the ranch. All right, so FedEx delivered another box today of fish. I got a box yesterday. Every single fish yesterday was dead. I took pictures. I just didn't take video of it. And then these are live, so I wanted to get them in the water right away. So these are the... Uh, whatchamacallit? I forget what they're called. Bluegill. So I've got a bunch of bluegill here. I've got them in the water, so as soon as the water temperature is the same, I'm going to get them in the pond uh, so I don't lose them. And uh, to try and contact the company, the company doesn't respond, so I won't be uh, advertising or telling everybody the website to go to because they are not doing good business. So I've contacted my credit card company because I've... Email multiple times, no responses. I've called multiple times, no callbacks. And their uh, voicemail is full, so I can't leave a message. So I've tried everything I can, tried different, calling from different numbers, block numbers, my number, internet number, uh, just no responses from this company. So it is what it is. Uh, let the credit card company take over, and hopefully they will investigate realize that it's fraud i sent them all the pictures of all the dead fish uh the damaged packages uh the emails so my comp my credit card company knows that I've done everything i can uh nothing else i can do so but at least a couple bluegills are going to be in the pond now so enjoy the rest of your day i'll talk to you guys later all right, so I just got done putting the fish in the pond and got this package from FedEx as well. So you can see I have a whole bunch of different bracelets. So I had a little boy that was here and he saw my sign that I sell the bracelets, the uh, nylon paper bracelets for entry because some people have wanted them for a shadow box uh, to put a good bracelet in the shadow box the pictures uh, business card etc for memories or photo album what have you for people that still do it uh, and he thought they were silicone bracelets so he's like oh man I really want a silicone bracelet so what I do I listen to the little boy and I bought silicone bracelets so whenever they get back to visit I'll have silicone uh, bracelets and he'll be able to get one so I've got two kinds. You can see there's an inner one and the outer one. Uh, I got adult sizes and I got children sizes. 
So the children are size about an inch shorter. But basically, uh, it says share the journey, which as everybody knows is our logo. And then today's homesteader, ranch and petting zoo. And since the uh, uh, FedEx lady stood there while I checked the fish and I knew what this package was, I went ahead and opened uh, the bracelet. And she goes, oh, wow, that purple's pretty. So I gave the FedEx lady uh, one of the purple ones. So she says she'll wear it and uh, then people can ask her about it and she'll tell people about it. So another way of advertising the petting zoo. And I haven't worn jewelry in forever, but... Uh, it's going to be cool to wear these and people are going to be wondering about them. So some of them uh, have black writing, the black and white, the purples. I did purple and white, the dark blues. I did purple and white, the dark green, purple and white. Then the oranges, the reds, the yellows. I went with uh, black and white uh, or black in color and uh, pink and white. So I did a variety of different. And as you can see, I bought... I want to say 500 of them or something uh, to get the price down so they weren't as expensive as just buying a couple of them uh, so yeah this is what we're doing here at the ranch all right everybody as everybody knows I love to start my animals so since I started the animals I never buy feed or anything like that for those of you that are new to the channel uh, new to watching me uh that's all just a joke because everybody knows i take care of my animals uh anyhow last night or yesterday i was supposed to have my hay guy here um highway got closed down then gps took him a different way because he had to come from another road so he didn't get here till late last night and as everybody knows if it wasn't for this tractor right here I would not be able to do what I'm doing and uh, with that tractor I was able to boom 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 couple uh, things got busted last night I'll throw those into the pig uh, but you can see the hay goes all the way around so another semi load of hay another four grand spent uh, 45 bales and uh, you go over here show you the Beautiful hay. So the animal is going to be happy. I'm going to get the road lined up. I'm going to get them fed real quick. Uh, but you can see that nice green lush hay. So I'll have the road lined today. Today's Saturday. So I'm thinking today's probably going to be a busy day. Because after that news story came out on Monday, uh, Wednesday, I broke my record. 27 people now is my record. And I had a bunch of people uh, messaging me on Facebook talking about coming today. So we'll see what today holds. But I've got to get the animals fed. And then I've got to start humping these with the tractor. Which is nice because I sit there in the air-conditioned cab. Boom. Air-conditioned cab. Put the radio on. Listen to music. And just cruise around and do my thing. So enjoy your day. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here in the morning. Okay, the unfortunate news. You can see the pond has dropped and dropped and dropped. Day by day by day, it goes down farther and farther and farther. And we've had these rain clouds off and on all day today. It's Sunday. Uh, spit a couple times, um, but no moisture whatsoever. So, unfortunately, still no water. Had to get the... Uh, trailer load of hay but I did get some stuff accomplished I've got this fence line and the gate done I'm not sure if that was in last week's video or not but this is done all the way up to the perimeter fence I put this uh, pole in here uh, that you can see right in front of me I'm going to run a fence going up and then I'm going to have a gate uh, where that pile is and uh, the fence will go behind the house site and then all the way over to where the dogs are and then come out. So that way I can let the dogs in half of this area where they're not uh, pooping, where the volleyball court and all that stuff's going to go. So that way I don't have to worry about picking up uh, dog poop every day uh, before people get here. 
and not miss a pile that somebody ends up stepping in or something like that. And then I'm thinking uh, now that I uh, had had some time, you can see all the hay that I started putting along the road goes up all the way over. But I'm thinking I'm going to keep Rex in the dog area uh, for a while. So that way winter time I can bring him in. I'm not sure exactly um, how I'm going to plan everything out. But I'll get around to that at some point. I still have a few more months until winter gets back here. But I have all that hay. I'm going to be moving uh, the loose hay that uh, busted the different things. I've been moving with the um, uh, side-by-side ATV. So I got to get the hay moved later this week. I've also started building these H braces. I put the gate in and I put that corner brace there. So the fence will go all the way up to the corner, turn, go behind the house site, come down and go back all the way down to the gate where I started showing you. So not a lot of stuff accomplished, but some stuff accomplished. And then I'm also going to get in touch and find out when I'm going to have that excavator. So I should know hopefully sometime next week.